And of course, Japan and the worries surrounding Japan was at the centre of all of that today. Larry Shova is from Efficient Capital Management, uh, also author of Trading Options in Turbulent Markets. So perfect person to speak to on a day like today. He comes to us live from the CME Group in Chicago. Uh, Larry, we appreciate your time once again. Um, we have been talking on the show today about um, uh, Japan and the, maybe the required funding in the rebuilding effort. Um, give us your thoughts on on how perhaps Japan's confidence, the investors of Japanese, uh, the investor confidence of the Japanese, the kind of the psyche, the, the impact on all of that from, the, from what's happened in Japan. Well, that, that's the biggest thing that's happening right now. It's, this is affecting the Japanese psychology. It's exposing the vulnerability they have. They've tried so hard for years to diversify themselves away from oil as they're importing everything. Now that their nuclear reactors are devastated, and we have no idea how long this is going to take to recover, if ever, um, with, with Japan, given that they have to rely on Middle Eastern oil. It's not a question of how high of a price it is, but if they can get it at all. I mean, the, the potential for disaster is enormous, and I think we're seeing that in the markets today. Even though there's no corporate headlines coming out, there's nothing really bad news in the U.S. The fact is, we're dealing with a lot of unknowns. The market hates surprises, so thus we're back down to 12.56 in the S&P. It all comes back to the energy, as you said. Do you question you know, the future of Japan as an economic powerhouse? Is that, is that what you're questioning? Well, right now it's the third largest, uh, third largest <clears throat> industrial economy in the world, and, th and that's a big question. I mean, can they recover? They import everything. Right now, they could probably make up the difference with imported natural gas from Australia and Indonesia, but right now, uh, we don't know how bad the uh, reactors are. Nobody knows. The vulture media seems to be penciling in the worst case scenario. We hope for the best for Japan, but I think the market's reaction is macro oriented right now. People don't know what's going on, so they're fearing the worst. The fact of the matter is, Japan is very vulnerable, and they've tried so hard to not be vulnerable by diversing into nuclear power. The fact is, that's not working. This could spell disaster for uh, Japan in the long term. What is corporate America doing at the moment to reassure investors? Are you hearing from companies coming out to, to update investors, um, to, to talk of their exposure? Well, the thing is, uh, this might actually be a good buying opportunity uh, for investors worldwide because the markets tend to overreact one way or the other. The fact is we don't know what's going on in Japan. Nobody knows, and I don't think we'll know for a month. But the fact of the matter is you have some big-name companies down 5 6 8% right now. It might be a good buying opportunity. Uh, one important thing to say is that the last couple of days in New York, and in Chicago, trading desks have not seen a lot of shorting of the market. It's actually just been a dearth of news. There's been a little bit of profit taking with no buyers anywhere, but there's really no uh, any hedge funds out there taking short positions. Everybody's just, you know, retreated to the sidelines. Larry, uh, good afternoon. It's Martin Lakos. I'm interested to hear that comment about the shorting. So if, if that's the case, do you think that the hedge funds are saying, well, hold on a minute, this is short term. We don't, we're not going to put on shorts here because the longer term trend actually is still probably up back on the back of the US recovery and, uh, you know, better numbers out of Europe and obviously the ongoing China, India emerging market story. Is that what why they're not getting involved? I think so. And I think the minute you see some credible news coming out, not some stale yeah. half-baked news that that's, we knew about I two know. days ago that made the market drop 1%, if we do see some credible news come out, you'll see a reaction so strong. It's a good time to get in if you, if you have money to risk into the market right now because things have overreacted. Not to say that this Japan thing isn't a big deal. It could end up being a very big deal. But the fact is, is it's a good calculated risk because no one knows what's going on right now. And you have some big companies down 5 to 8 percent might be a good time to, to get, a, get into the stock market. Yeah, it does seem that they're, uh, the market's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. And I'm a big believer in, uh, you know, in particularly with regards uh, to the Japanese, their, their resilience. And I think that although the times are very tough, and as you rightly said, there's too many unknowns at the market, and that's being reflected in, in the markets. Uh, but ultimately, I think the Japanese will, uh, will come through this you know, even better and stronger, particularly the, the rebuild phase, where it's six months away or 12 months away, uh, will really spur that, uh, that economy back on. 
I agree. I mean, I think the Japanese are resilient people. They're just digging their way out of like no growth for the past 10 years. Obviously, this came at the worst time that could ever happen for them and for the world. But I think they'll do anything possible to get back on track. And that's why you have these huge names that seem like they're incredible buys right now. I, I think by the end of the year, you'll see, you'll, you may even see the stock market higher, okay. just like in 1995. Hate to compare it so much with the Kobe disaster. But uh, by the end of the year, the stock market was leveled off and higher from where it was from the earthquake uh, nine months prior. Larry, just one last question, if I may. Uh, it seems markets have almost forgotten about what's happening in the Middle East and obviously there's been more disruptions uh, in Bahrain. You know, is that sort of still uh, smoldering away in the, in the back of people's minds in the US as well or is it very much all about Japan, Japan, Japan? Yeah, everything's Japan, Japan, Japan. And, and then you hear about Gaddafi, uh, you hear about Bahrain and all the problems there. And, and don't forget, uh, Europe's still a big issue with the sovereign debt crisis in Portugal and Spain. It seems like that's taking a back seat right now to Japan. There are definitely a lot of moving parts in the market right now. But overall, despite everything, the global economy is on an upswing. And I think there's enough gumption in the market right now to overtake all these problems for the long term, not right away, not in the next couple of days, but uh, these problems are real, but the market is resilient enough. Growth is, is, is really doing very well all throughout the world. I don't see why not the equities around the world could rally by year's end. Larry, a final question from me relating back to the first guest that we had on the program, Alan, saying that he feels the, the real concern for people around that he's chatting to at the NYSC is basically the fact that Japan's the second biggest buyer of US Treasuries they might not buy now because of this. Is that a real risk, do you think? Or again, do you put that in the, the kind of the fear basket and, and that's not um, something that there's any evidence of or you don't think that will happen? I think that's an outlier risk, one of those risks that could happen. Right now, what they're talking about is intervening in the market. Now, they haven't gotten any cooperation thus far from the United States or the EU, so they might have to resort to that. But at this point, I think the, the least path to resistance for them would be to intervene into the market. And it seems like 80 in the yen seems to be the sweet spot where that will happen. Thank you so much, Larry. We appreciate your time as always. Larry Shover from Efficient Capital Management. Thank you.